We're interrupting this program in order to begin our regularly scheduled broadcast. Thanks for watching the Lit TV Network. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I'm your host, Kim Warner with Kim Warner's World or Kim's Universe. And I have Twyla, Prindle, and Easy from Easy's Trading Lounge back again. We're always discussing finances and what we can do to set a new trajectory for our people. And that trajectory has been uh, discussing stock options. So my first question right out the bat is, I, I, I'm personally wanting to know and wanting easy to tell the people about the discord uh, that goes along with the trading lounge. Because a lot of times people will think that they're just coming into listening to something even in um, the classes that you give, just say for instance, you can correct me, are in Clubhouse. I like the idea of a Discord being there, but could you explain that to the people and how you can show them the different aspects when they come into your class so they're interacting because some people need to hear and that kind of thing. Yes. Yes. Peace, peace, everyone. Hi, Twala. Hi, John Kim. Um, hey. Well, my room is on Clubhouse, right? We do have a room from 9 a.m. to uh, Eastern to 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern. That's when the market opens. We do have a, a Discord on Clubhouse. Uh, club uh, the EP, the Discord is called EP Trading Lounge. The EP Trading Lounge is a place where people put information at. Um, they could put information about tickers, meaning that they trade. They could put information about books, uh, learning material, um, different articles about what's going on in the market, um, past Zoom um, recordings. Uh, we do record people showing their charts, asking them questions. So we do have a, a uh, link to that in the Discord. So everything that we know and share, we put in the Discord for people to come and, and, and listen or to, um, to get to know it. Because we have tutorials on what options are in there. We got tutorials on strategies. It's a... It's a slew of things uh, that is, is vital to learning how to um, trade. So that EP lounge is definitely, Discord is something you need to uh, investigate. All you need is your email and your phone number, and we, you will be accepted and just roam around and see what's, what's there. And um, if you have any questions about it, just open your mouth or ask. So in a nutshell, that's what it's about. All right. Um, okay, let's land move. My plane. On. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I said I land my plane. Uh, can I add to that by you personally training with that with the Discord? Well, I'm not training to... with that. Right. I'm not training with it. It's just information that uh, we as a community put in there. So uh, people can go at there anytime and learn. And I tell people, go there. You know, it's information there is powerful. You know, so go there, learn. Um, just don't do it when we are in the room. You can do it outside the room. So it's, it's, it's like going to a library, picking up, picking up a book, you know, you go to a book, you look at sci-fi, whatever you look at in, in the library, uh, the Discord is like that. And if you want to know something, all you got to do is open your mouth and you can, you know, we'll tell you where it's located, um, what it's about, um, what we do in this particular um, um, section of the Discord. Okay, Twyla, do you want to add anything? I'll just say that um, there's a lot of things there. Um, if you're a person who um, you're new or you may feel a little intimidated by um, 
because it's so much like with the stock market, so many different areas you can learn, so many different areas you can earn. So it can be a little intimidating. So I think that the Discord, at least the one that he has, it has so many things there that anyone can go if you just, you know, take some time out and go through it. Um, like he said, there's lots of information there, but then there's a lot of videos there as well. Videos, there's a lot of um, Zoom classes that um, have taken place in the past to walk you through a lot of things. So like the main thing I would say people probably struggle with is just charting and understanding how the market moves. So everything is there. And, and I like to that it's not just from one person. Of course, you know, we all learn differently. Three people can say the same thing. And then that one person you resonate with and it all makes sense. So I like that as well, where um, there's a variety of people teaching the same thing. So um, the other thing, too, is, is just things that are going on in the news. You know, it's a lot of, a lot of times it's, um, it can be difficult keeping up with everything, but then anything of significance that's going on in the market in the everyday news is there. Someone's posted it. So it gives you an opportunity to um, get everything you need. It's almost like a one-stop shop, if you could say. Okay. Okay, so charting. Discuss charting a little bit. Both of you. Well, basically, well, basically, charting is uh, you have to, you know, it's different ways of charting. That's why I say people, we, we ask people to come to the room and, um, you know, on the Zoom call to uh, demonstrate how they look at the market. Um, it's different ways of, you know, certain M M MEAs. Uh, it's uh, levels to this. It's uh, it's so on and so on. It's, it's a lot of things to to um, digest in charting, and charting will help you uh, determine your exits, your resistance, your um, way of looking at the market in order to exit. Um, so charting is a big part of stock market. You know, I tell people you have to learn charting and fundamentals. You know, it comes hand to hand. Articles, reading articles, and knowing what uh, they are uh, with charting, you know, is hand to hand. So you have to learn at least the basics of charting, the, ent the entry points and your exit points. And then that's when um, different um, sections of charting you have to uh, identify as well. So it's not just a one, one hit or miss. It's you have to learn that as well. Yeah, and I'll just add, you know, what he said is, is exactly what he's saying. Um, if you're a beginner, you know, sometimes they tell you, um, learn the candlesticks. Well, the candlesticks are inside the chart. And as he said, it just tells you, like, when you understand and look at that, it tells you when to enter. Just because, I'm just going to say Apple, just because you, somebody tells you, um, oh, you got to get, get in Apple, that's a good trade. Well, you know, Apple may be at its high today, so... You know, you get in today and then it drops tomorrow, then you can go into a panic and say, well, you know what? I've lost money. This is not working when it's really not that. It's just that you got in at the wrong time. So the charting helps you to see when is a good time to get into the trade. Also lets you know when is the time to exit. Although you're keeping some things for the long term, you know, sometimes you just may want to, you know, take some of your profits out. Okay. So the stock, I just want to ask myself, I don't know if Ricky has some questions back there. What is the difference in trading and uh, the options? Okay, stock market and the options. Because oh. some, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Finish your thought. I, I some think people you say what's the difference between stocks and options. Am I correct? That's it. Correct. Yeah. Right. Well, stocks is uh, the actual company. Like for like she just said, uh, as far as said about um, Apple, Apple is the stock itself, right? Options is a derivative from um, stocks. So when you doing stocks, you just doing plain stocks and you are watching it go up and down. Options are when you uh, you know looking at actually strikes in order to gain money from the strikes itself, and it's more profitable 
uh, than stocks itself. It's way more profitable. You can lose on options and you can win on options. Some people say, I'm going to stick, uh, let me stick to stocks so I feel more safe. But when you do options, you definitely got to be on your P's and Q's by, um, you know, learning it. You know, uh, I can't tell you all in one one word, but uh, just come to the room, start learning. It's like anything, you know. I like to use the concept of, of, of riding a bike when you're riding a bike. You know, a good analogy of when you first learn and what you do, you have training wheels, right? You just don't get on a bike and start riding. Not a lot of people do that. So they have to learn how to get on the training, training wheels on a bike. It's like options. You know, uh, you have to learn what's what, what's to look for, what strike to, to look into, um, what's the volume on it. So it's different levels to this. As you get familiar with that, it will come to you over and over again. Because the market is repetitive. You know, you see a thing over and over again. It doesn't matter what stock you you have, you will see it over and over again. The options are just, just another uh, arena of of the stock, you know, if that explains it um, correctly. Twyla? Oh, yeah. So um, there's like a, it's so many different ways that you can trade, as he was saying. You know, stock is um, a, a piece of a company's pie, if you will. So, of course, companies are um, trying to raise money. So that's one of the ways in which they do it. Options is just um, another way to do it. So if you think of if you're buying, you know, one or two shares here and there with um, the stock market, if you're just um, buying shares, individual shares of a company versus if you're trading options, then you're buying contracts, which is each contract has a hundred shares. So I know we we're talking about Apple, so you can buy one share of Apple. And if it's trading right now at $170 and you buy it at 170 and if it goes up tomorrow to 172, then you made $2 versus if you're trading options and you have like a um, hundred contracts of that, I mean, a hundred shares of Apple, it won't cost you that may not cost you that full, 170 it may be a little bit cheaper but then you're trading the rights of like you have 100 shares so options just moves a little bit faster the profit margin is larger but you know could be a little more riskier if you don't know what you're doing um but um even though we're talking about stocks and options there's just so many different ways that you can trade even in that so like when we talk about options you know, some people trade earnings like um, Easy does earnings every single day. What companies um, are coming up on their earnings? So some people do that because, you know, if someone is projected, a company is projected to have good earnings, then for the quarter, then, you know, their stock price is probably going to go up. So that's a good time to get in where we call it when it goes up. That's you're buying a call. When it goes down, you're buying a put. So um, earnings is a way. Um, there are um, new companies starting out, IPOs, that may be a way. Um, you can scout the market, you know, that's, you know, you just go in real quick and you getting whatever percent you want and then you're getting right back out and you're doing that in the same day. You can be a swing trader where you buy, you buy your options today, you may hold it for a few days and then you can be a day trader like easy where you just, you know, you just trade everything in a day. So. It's like so many different ways. I always say like, at least for me, when I started, it's just kind of you get in and just kind of play around a little bit and see what works for you because we're all different. We all have different personalities and you just find out what works for you. But I would say the number one thing is to make sure you have a plan. Be, um, and when you start, don't co come in playing with money that you cannot afford to lose. And um, if you can start off with paper trading, so um, you can at least somewhat know what you're doing before you actually start using real money because it can be fast paced, especially if you're there. There's different um, stocks, of course, and they all trade differently. You may trade something that moves super fast and it's like, OK, wait a minute. This is too fast for me. Or you may choose a stock that moves, moves slow. 
the thing is you come in and you pick the ones that you're going to trade and you know you just get the norm it's just like being in a relationship you get to see you know how that just like you wait and see how a person moves and how they do things do the same thing with the stock you know you get to know it and you see how it moves as well that's a good analogy that's good ricky what what is the procedure to um purchase um stock options what what what's the procedure the steps to go through in order to purchase stock stock options well first and foremost you have to be on a on a platform um, the platforms they have out there are Robinhood, um, Weeble, uh, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, uh, Thinkorswim, T Ameritrade. There's so many platforms out there to um, to use. Um, I prefer. I tell the newcomers, you always should use something that's easier. And like I said once again, training wheels. I you should use uh, Robinhood because it's it's user friendly but you have to be accepted on doing options on that platform. Everybody who, 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 who I speak to, I say, get that platform because it's, it's easy to navigate. And then when you start um, getting familiar with that, you know, then that's when you get another platform. It could be Weeble, it could be uh, TradingView, it can be um, um, TOS. Every platform is different. You know, and I, I, I stress people learn how to use it. But if you want to, if you was a newbie, I would say get Robinhood. Start start with that so you can get Acumina and know how to navigate uh, Robinhood in order to get better. And as you get better, you'll want to branch off and get more other, um, other platforms, which they all are free. All platforms are free. You just, you just have to know how to navigate it and fund it. And that's it. And get accepted to do options on those platforms. But if you want to learn, I say get Robinhood. So I answer your question. Booker, in order to um, achieve, uh, to, to trade, you have to call Charles Schwab and call them and they just, you know, put your order in. Now that I think I told you last time, um, technology caught up with um, with Wall Street, so we can be anywhere in trade. You know, we don't have to be just in one stable in one spot. So, you know, being acclimated to um, trading doesn't matter if it's forex, options, stock. You could be anywhere. So I think that's what she was leading up to, as far as she don't have to be home, and that's that's one way. I love being being mobile, uh, going anywhere, and and trade without being in one spot. So um, that's the luxury of the stock market, where you could be anywhere. That's why these platforms that we are using, you know, is it's, it's super cool, and all we have is learn it, and that's it, and fund it. So, but I think that's where she was headed. How yeah. often would you, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. How often would you recommend somebody um, remove their money or uh, take money out? Or you, do you recommend just leave it in? Well, well, first and foremost, how much money are you planning, planning on using? You always use the money that you're willing to lose in the market. So if you have $100 and everything, right, that's the money you're willing to lose when you trade. And if it goes up to a thousand, you know, I suggest you only use 10% of that thousand dollars in order to uh, accumulate, build up your account. Don't use all of it, you know, uh, build build it up. So when you got a thousand, then 2,000, 3,000, you know, in, in due time, you will, you will see that as you're accumulating, you will, um, your account will grow. And, and to not lose money, you know, uh, like I said, um, there are mechanisms and effect that you can say, you know what, let me put my stop loss. Stop loss is, stop loss is when you want to not lose as much as money as you are trading. So say that we are trading, right? And we put a hundred dollars in there and the market goes against us. Like nobody knows exactly what to do. I mean, I mean, how, market's going to do for you but 
say the market do go go wrong on you what you have to do is put a stop loss and say you know what if this goes five percent below where i got out i'm gonna have it kick me out and that's all the money i'm willing to lose is five percent of my trade or ten percent or whatever some people have different tolerance levels so they, they, they using much more money but they, they're using much less money so it's all according to that individual so that's how you protect your money by putting stop losses in when you do trade you understand so uh it's all up to how much you are willing to put in the market but yeah you, you could take you could take it out anytime you want to um they have they have debit cards where you can um um trade i'm mean, excuse me you can use it in stores you can but that's your money that you're earning but you can do that or you can have a transfer from say a robin hood to your personal account you know you could do that as well so if you if you getting 20 30 thousand on a trade you say you know what let me transfer ten thousand to my main account yes you can do that but no problem but no problem miss Charlie, you had anything yeah, I was just going to say, you know, um, although we're talking about how everything works, you have to have your own plan of how you're going to do that. I know you're talking about, you know, what do you recommend as far as taking money out? Um, personally, myself, I don't take any money out. Um, that's just me, though. So I think, you know, everyone has different situations or whatnot. And um, now I will say because we are in volatile times and we don't know what the economy is going to do. If um, you know, if I start feeling, you know, like I need to do that, then you know my profits I take out. But like for me, a lot of times the profits I make from stock options, I put them into my long-term trades, which would be you know shares of stocks that I plan to keep over the long term. So. Everyone's going to have a different plan or a different course of action that they take. So it's up to you to get in and play around and see what your plan is. What your plan is, because what Easy does may not be what I do, may not be what Kim does. You have to see what's best for you and what you like. What Kim does, I have professionals right here. I don't care if they want me to say professional or not. You don't want to know what Kim does. That's why we have them in the room right now. So good, good discussion. Ricky, did you get all your information? Like what I really want to ask is what's some good trades right now to throw out there? <laughs> well, well, I wouldn't say good trades because everybody is different um mm -hmm. everybody should have at least at least three or four uh trades that they uh that they want to learn from and if you want to uh do the big boys which is the apple uh the nvidia the amd um there's so many trades out there to to get into you know the spy so it's all up to the individual but mm -hmm. as you learn and which uh which uh Twala said you know when you learn how it moves it's like you learn how your mate moves you will know okay I, lo I, I love messing with apple i know how she works i know when to get in i know when when not to get in it's just all according to the individual but like i said these big major companies are not going in nowhere uh apple is like a almost a three trillion dollar in um company you know you have amd you have disney so it's so many companies out there but once again you know i can't stress this enough you know you need at least two or three companies on your roster in order to in my opinion i mean i have 10 that i do but that that's just me you know that i can trade on the regular because i learn how it moves i know how it works so but for newbies I say get two or three and then, you know, uh, maybe two work with that and see how it works and learn it, you know, be around people who are doing the same thing you're doing. So you won't feel like you're lonely. You know, that's why the clubhouse is a great 
place to be because people are doing this. I mean, Clubhouse in my room, you know, EP Trading Lounge is a good place to be because, you know, we are learning together. You know, um, I consider myself a master student. I'm not a professional. I don't claim to be. But if you know your craft, if you know what you're doing, you know, it's like it's repetitive. So um, to answer your question about that, you have to know what stocks you are looking at, you know, and that, that's all. But as you go on and on and on, you will see which ones that resonate with you. It's different, it's different industries, medical, EV, uh, 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 tech, so many industries out there, whatever resonate with you, that's when you go going to say, you know what, I'm going to only do Pfizer. I'm only going to do Johnson & Johnson. It's going to do Apple. I'm going to do Tesla. I'm going to do Rivian. I'm gonna, so there's so many um, trades out there, stocks out there. You have to see what's, what resonates with you, if that answers your question, Kim. It does. It does. I know um, it's and... long-winded, but I just wanted to, you know, give you more insight. Yeah, it was good, though. The other part, wait a minute, Swala, is like, you know, giving some newbies some some ideas of a stock. Go ahead, Swala. That's what I was, yes, I was, you answered very well. Yes. That's what I was going to kind of talk about. Like, if you're brand new, I feel like the easiest way to pick those few that Easy is talking about is use some of the things or pick um, stocks that you're already familiar with. I know we talked about Apple before, but if you have um, an Apple phone, Apple watch, you know, you got an Apple computer, the Mac or whatever, then you like Apple. So that means that you're probably going to be more in tune to what, what's going on with Apple. You know when something new is coming out or what's going on in the news. So you're more likely to understand and know what's going on with Apple. If you're a person that you know you like, I'm switching this concept over, but my stock is in the soul of people, mental health. That's my stock. And um, moving forward, I do look at medical stock. Um, those are and cannabis. Those are stocks that I, I look at um, because they deal with the mind, body, and spirit. Another uh, discussion, but you're right on point, both of you. So. Um, Glad to have you here. So thank you for uh, thank you for the knowledge and the wisdom, um, and also uh, the push to push um, those ahead into times of progression that have been sitting waiting on another way to manifest or produce because some of the old ways are just not coming back. We're done with 2020. It pushed us into a new evolution. And so until we meet again, God bless you all. I'll talk to y'all on the back end. Thank you to our viewers. I hope that you get something out of this. And also go to uh, Easy Trading Lounge on uh, Clubhouse and visit Twyla. She writes books um, for children. And she has a lot of, of things coming up for uh, kids and adults here soon. So be blessed. Thank you so much. And bye-bye. Thank you.